<laughs> if for any reason, it, okay, looks like we're going. Yay. Let's see. Okay, looks like we're live. Yeah, all right. Hey, wow. it's Sue, Sue Greenbaum with Awakened Stories here today with Lydia Durham. Hey, Lydia. Hey. How are you? So Good. it's uh, March 27th, 2024. This is our third part in Lydia's life story. We'll see if we can get up to the present moment. <laughs> I'm just kind of joking. We, we've we glossed over a lot of details. So there's a lot of stories and things we haven't gone deep in. But let's kind of recap the first couple of videos. The first video was mostly your childhood where you lived a... Um, you know, you lived an unusual life. It was kind of a dysfunctional household, to, to be put it mildly. Your dad had bags of cash always stowed around the house, his vehicles, like so much that he had to occasionally put it in, in a neighbor's shed or a friend's shed. It was just very unusual. A lot of fighting going on in the household um, and all of that kind of stuff. And then you ended up marrying um, someone that, uh, basically didn't really want you, but wanted control of you. And uh, he basically tried to poison you, tried to kill your family, which he succeeded. And uh, just a very unusual time there. And then we've kind of moved to, uh, you've moved to North Carolina. And you just started hearing like zombie-like people walking around saying, the name is George. All right. So, uh, and then you had a lot of coincidental type of things happen around that time. And you realized you ran, you saw a show on Charles Manson and you realized what they were telling you is that your adopted dad was Charles Manson. Is that kind of where we were? Right. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like we had said, the last video we had, um, she had walked, you know, wherever you went, you would hear the name is George. And then yeah. it was something uh, pertinent to Charles Manson, which is not normal because, like I said in the last video, uh, the Charles Manson thing happened years ago. So why right. would all that stuff be coming up now? It doesn't even make sense. Um, right. So you figured out who your adopted dad was. And then what happened? Because we've got more to tell. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, they did the George thing for quite some time you know yeah. and they'll when when they're doing stuff like that they really hammer it home you know yeah I yeah. mean they'll hammer it and hammer it go heavy and hard yeah oh here we go here we go it's a consistency thing you yeah know? it's yeah. a consistency thing so yeah. everything with them will be consistency um you know so it's not going to be like a one day here, one day there, um, you know, and here and there type of thing. Yeah. It is yeah. definitely going to be every day, all day, throughout the day um, in a certain pattern. So this way, the person has to know and get the point that it is definitely directed at them toward right. them right. there is a message being relayed to them right. yeah. you know by who you won't know but you'll know that it's definitely there and coming you right. know and then you know when you start to get the message you know because they're monitoring you your actions or what they'll know that you're starting to pay attention because you can't right. help but to pay attention right. you know um, then they'll start to enhance what they're doing. You know, they'll start to, um, maybe do it more or, you know, get, get like louder with the message, um, just enhance the message and, and just, it'll get, it'll get like louder, you know, yeah, yeah. and, um, you know, they'll do things to even validate when you get get what they're saying right, right. yeah so so that isn't the only time that's happened to you though like no. so you have the name uh, the name is george over and over and over repeatedly throughout every single day for i think you said months 
Oh yeah. 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 And then I mean, they'll this. even turn off your TV. Remo- I mean, however they're doing it remotely. Okay. And you'll be watching something and your literally your TV will turn off your remote's not by you. Nothing is by you. It will turn off and it will go back on like it's rebooting yourself. You'll see the circle like where the Internet's like rebooting that little circle thing, yep. reloading, yep. you know, because it comes back up. You'll see that happening and whatever they want. So if it is it's the helter skelter stuff that you've noticed for the last mm-hmm. month, pop right. up, pop up, pop up. All of a sudden, when your TV comes back on, it will all of a sudden go to a Manson flick. So it turns off. No remotes are by you. And you're sitting there like, what in the heck's going on? And then you're even thinking to yourself, man, I don't want to get up. Now I got to get up, get the remote, you know, this and that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. You're, then you're saying to yourself, yeah. wait a minute, because you see it go back on and then you're watching it flick itself by itself to Helter Skelter or whatever, a Manson interview or whatever. And you're saying, this is impossible because you've done noticed the pattern of it get feeding you the Manson stuff or whatever it's feeding you for the past whatever. So if whether it's Manson, whether it's it could be anything, whether it's, right. uh, you know, yeah. Mariah Carey, whatever, you know, whatever the theme is, yeah. that's what it's going to turn on to whatever the message is. OK, that's what it does. So when you found out your adopted dad was Charles Manson, like, did you like flip out? Like, what did you do? Well, yeah, my, my reaction. Actually, I'll tell you what my first words are. This is blanking BS. This is because <laughs> of the fake news. Yeah. I mean, I just kept it real. This is because of the fake blanking news. This yeah. is blanking BS. If the news wasn't lying to people and people were doing their job and the Justice Department was doing their job and everybody wasn't lying in the damn news, yeah, maybe there wasn't wouldn't be a ring of serial killers running loose. Crazy. It's crazy. It's just the, the whole the whole promise. We're not done yet, though. That's that's the mind. No, no, we're uh, but, nowhere near done. Yeah. There's a, like I said, there's a ring of serial killers running loose. But you got the other ones on the other side doing it, you know, because, you know, it, it, it says it in the Bible where there is good, there is evil is always present. Well, think of it. Think of it. If they're saying where there is good, there is e- evil is always present. Well, if the evil is doing it, that means the good's doing it too. So you got them running around and uh, they're not dead. They're in different alias names. They're wearing disguises. They're, uh, you know, or they're just looking different or they wore disguises when they were on TV, vice versa, whatever the case may be. You just, yeah. Yeah. you don't know who they are, whatever the case may be. Well... The other side does it too. So what the good does, the bad does, they both do it. So literally, it goes both ways. I I hate to tell you. You know, it is what it is. Okay. So let's move forward from there. You're like, you're a little bit shocked, I would say. You've got a lot of choice words. Then what happens next? What happens next? Yeah. Yeah. You've been bamboozled. The world has been bamboozled. I think most of us, that. most of us watching uh, this already know that pretty much nothing we're seeing out there is true or correct. And I think what we right. don't understand is the scope of the lies. And oh, yeah. the deception. Like, like every time I hear a new thing, I'm like shocked and you know not really but it's like well i haven't thought about it in that perspective before so we already know it's not what we've been told we already know that right well i mean it is what happened you got a bunch of a-holes running the media i mean i mean in reality you know um you know talking a-holes because they're they sit there behind (laughs) behind the mic you know and run a bunch of lies yeah. 
you know, yeah. and get paid to do so. Yeah. You know, and literally to destroy lives. Um, you know, it's a bunch of BS. Right. right. Because right. and literally, because the thing about it is you have people out here that are running around in either masks or it's just it's it's just not even real people right. and you're telling these stories and you have real people suffering the yep. consequence of the bs that you're making up right you know right. and you're you're going through this you have people arguing families breaking up you got people reporting people to um cps or divorce courts you got people's names in lawsuits you got all this stuff going on over literally over fake news right, right. you have murderers running loose you have you know the money launders you have scam artists you have all of this stuff going on off the blood sweat and tears of everybody else it is the biggest abuse of power okay that the world has ever known right right okay and they're just running it and getting away with it okay and people aren't asking any questions about it first of all Everybody wants to sit and call everybody a fraud, right? Okay. Why are you going after the people on the on the internet then? That's that would be my question. So if you're calling, oh, this whistleblower and that whistleblower is a fraud. Oh, this person who's um claiming that he's seen this and that, and people in the government are killing this and that, and blah blah yada yada. Why are you going after the people that claim to be? Why are you not going after the authorities then for not taking it down and allowing it to happen? Why the heck aren't you all going after the ones who are allowing people to scam people over the Internet? They're getting away with it because law enforcement don't do anything about it, idiots. <laughs> okay, let's go back to your story. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So, one other thing we had talked about last time was you had worked for um, Jeffrey Epstein, and his name to you Jim was Jim Norris. Norris. Yeah, that's scumbag, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So when you kind of blew him in, like basically what happened is you took his whole like client. Yeah, let's let's talk about Jim Norris. Let's talk about that low life. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he is a real low life. See, that that's a perfect story right there to get into this. Okay, yeah. let's talk about that trash bag low life. Watch me get beamed in the head by, by a direct energy weapon or no, something. No, don't say that. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying because I call him a trash bag low life. But he is a trash bag low life. Um, <laughs> I wonder if B's watching. Anyway, in blue, in blue. Okay, so anyway. um, <laughs> No, but really. So Jeffrey Epstein, a.k.a. Jimbo Norris. The name is Jim Norris, by the way. See, I use their their words now. Like the name is George. The name is George. So I learned the techno the the terminology now. So now I have that poster with the name is Jim Norris. I got that from them, by the way. The name is. So now the name is Jim Norris. The name is Jim Norris. Now I throw it back at them. The name is Jim Norris. So the name is Jim Norris. So Epstein, aka Jimbo Norris. He had came to me when like the car went on fire and all that kind of stuff, you know, because the car was set on fire. So Jim Norris has come around and he was talking about the um, a Ponzi scheme he was running, but I didn't know it was a Ponzi scheme at the time. Right. So right. he was talking about this, these investment things. And, um, you know, he was also into um, a sports leadership camp. He was, uh, he said he was so-called part of Rutgers University and he was running this um, New Jersey, he, uh, he, he had his own business and it was like new NJ sports because he used to play for, he used to play for the, uh, the Giants. No, no, literally this is it. I have the paperwork. It's on my page. 
that this moron was spewing. Anyway, so that he used to play for the Giants in the NFL. And um, so he was doing the New Jersey, whatever. But he also was involved with these scientists. And I heard them on the phone, too. So, I mean, this this was like he has a lot of parallels with the actual Epstein. OK, so he had this science program where they were doing concussion research, stem cell something or other and all this other stuff. OK, and um I mean, he made it sound so good, though, me not knowing all we know today, you know, but it's like, you know, with the stem cell research, um, it would heal a lot of things. Like, so the way he was selling it, it's it did sound good to somebody who doesn't know what's really going on today, just a regular person. Believe me, you could sell it because it's like, well, with the stem cell research, you know, um, It'll be able to, you know, your art, if you have arthritis, if you have this, if you have that, you know, um, it'll help people to right. be able to, you know, so the way you sell it, man, it's like, you know, you're sitting there like, you're sitting there like, whoa, you know, so um, you're like, wow, you know, so he's sitting there selling all that. He would have scientists on the phone in meetings talking yeah. about it. The concussion research was for um football players like um you know who had the concussion so within the nfl and also he was going to run these he was running these sports leadership camps for um youths and he was doing these little camps or something and helping them and teaching them and and making these like different kind of helmets or something and and stuff like that that was supposed to protect their heads better to prevent concussions and stuff like that yeah. so it was like all this stuff about like learn about head traumas and head injuries and stuff like that and then he was also doing what you call a seed a raise program and that was specifically for people who were not able to like get into the market yet so he was going after low income people mostly and what it was is you give $7000 so in in the market you would need say you'd have to be making 100 grand a year or more to be able to mess around in the market right so this was to get people to that 100 grand a year um within the first year okay. and so they could then play in the market right so he was saying you invest that seven thousand and then it grows you to a hundred within that year so now you could then go to these other platforms and be eligible to make it to the market right well it was a ponzi scheme right so he had me going to these meetings and he had me, you know, because I have a nursing license, this and that. And um, he figured it would be good. But here I am that, you know, more like the, you know, innocent type of girl, this and that. I mean, bottom line is he kind of wanted me to, I guess, be a recruiter. You know, and I sat there. I had, a, you know, some of the medical background. But I also had that, you know, like more kind of... Um, the innocent girl business, you know, speak to them in a certain way. And I guess make them feel a little more comfortable because right. there was a girl, a woman there, you know, whatever. But he had me at the meetings with them speaking this and that. And he had a way, you know, to fool them. But when my car had gone on fire, you know, he came and he was like, you know, I'm going to front you a down payment for a new car, right? And, um, you know, I want you to get, I want you to make sure you get a newer kind of car because you want something reliable. You don't want, you know, you don't want to go get something, you know, after something like that, you just don't want to go get anything. You don't want right. to take a chance. You, you and your kids need to be safe and all this kind of stuff. Right. So I go out there and I get something, you know, and little did I know though, you know, when we had certain meetings, 
there was a meeting with a bishop that he had. Yeah, and you told us about that last time, yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I said that on here? Or did yeah, I yeah. He, on the phone? He, he said that you were uh, your car was paid in full and, and um, he yeah. misled them on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah. I mean, little did I know, you know, I had no idea that he was telling them that I paid it in full, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I never, I, I just, you know, I didn't know, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, I was able to buy a car. I was able to buy a car, you know, um, not in full, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, but he's telling me I can't go to that particular meeting in the evening because they don't like women there. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and, and that gentleman informed me he's never said that when I, you know. Yeah, that's so, yeah. Right. You know, so um, basically this, you realized yeah. that it wasn't an honest business. After right. And and I, I, yeah. And I said something and aired him out and all that, you know, and boy, oh boy, did that begin a whole crap yeah. storm of events. Yeah. You know, so, so you basically sent out to his entire email list um messages saying <laughs> that it wasn't um you know it was a scam and you i think then you sent a second message a voicemail that he had done so people knew who he you know kind of like the person that they were dealing with so you mm -hmm. sent that out and then he retaliated if, if i'm not mistaken so you right. had gone to the fbi oh yeah you were there a couple hours and then when you got home there were police there so tell us about that yeah Oh, yeah. So I go to the FBI. I report that son of a bee. Hate that mother. But anyway, so I report the scumbag. And then, you know, they were giving me the runaround anyway. You know, I remember I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I said who I was there to report what's going on. They're giving me the runaround. Then I wasn't even really able to really get what I have to do done. They're like, you know, you have to come back and do this and do that. And I'm like, that's weird. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it was it was ridiculous, uh, like really. But I still didn't understand why. I was just, I just remember leaving, like, why do I have to jump through hoops like this to report this low life, like, for frauding everybody? And then I'm gonna have to go back and tell the bishop and all of them like that I tried to report this idiot and nothing yeah. got done. Like this is so yeah. pathetic, you know. I get back to the house. And there's cops coming down for my, you know, for my area. And I'm like, what the hell is there cops? At? You know, and they're like, are you Lydia Dorm? And I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, we have a call that you're going to kill yourself. And I said, I am? I said, how am I going to kill myself? <laughs> they're like, well, we just had an anonymous call that you're going to kill yourself. I said, on the way home from the FBI, they said, you were just at the FBI? I said, yeah, reporting a criminal. I said, so am I going to kill myself or is the criminal going to kill me? Well, we don't know anything about that. We just had a report. You're going to kill yourself. <laughs> I said, well, why don't you find out, do an investigation and find out if the criminal wants to kill me? I said, because whoever's reporting this bogus BS... I said, why don't you find out if that asshole is the one going to kill me? I said, because as far as I'm concerned, I wasn't killing myself. I just called the children and told the children. Meanwhile, they're upstairs with somebody I'd watch you. I said, I just called and told them, get ready. I'm going to come get you. We're going to go get something to eat. So, you know. I don't know why I would be killing myself. Right. You know, reporting a crime. In fact, I said, you know what, though? I said, I would want to stick around to see that son of a bitch go down. You know, just just to let you know, I want to see what happens with with what's going to happen with that crime. They're like, well, we still have to take you to the hospital. I said, well, you know what? I said, this is the stupid. I said. I said, this is ridiculous. I said, so you could get a call 
from somebody that you don't, somebody that don't give their, don't give nothing. You come and speak to the person. The person can give you where they've just gone, what's going on, seem totally normal, report to you. They're not going to do anything. The, the person's totally, ra you know, and you're going to, so if I had work, if I had whatever to do, my whole day is done because you decide this. I said, that's what you're telling me in the United States of America. Because some asshole decides to play a game. I said, but the criminal I just reported, they didn't even really care to hear what I had to say, but he's stealing probably about over 50 people's money right now. I said, I bet nobody's picking him up, though. I said, I, I mean, I'll guarantee you that. I said, but you know what? I'll do you a favor. I'll go to the hospital. I said, give me two hours. I'll be out of there. I said, and I'll report this whole incident. That's what's going to happen. I said, no problem. I'll go. A couple hours later, I was out of there. I told the doctor, I said, why I'm here, I'd like to report a criminal. I said, again, I want to put that on record in this hospital. I said, because I was on the way to the FBI, I meant on the way back from the FBI, they wouldn't take my case from reporting criminal activity of a Ponzi scheme by Jim Norris. Did uh, the doctor write that down? Um, I think he did. I mean, he should have. He wasn't in there with his, you know, he was just listening. You know, I said, please take note. His name is Jim Norris and he's <laughs> running a Ponzi. <laughs> yeah, I did. I said, he's running a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, yeah. You know, now when I did report him to the FBI again as Jeffrey Epstein, mm -hmm. an ambulance showed up to the house and told me I had to go to the hospital. I swear to God, that's when the hospital told me I had this uh, delusional disorder at that time. I, I was out in two hours again, but on the paperwork, I had delusional disorder. You know what I told them? I said, delusion your ass. I said, I'm telling you, the name is Jeffrey Epstein because they reported it, you know, already. So I was like, I don't even give a crap. I'm telling, I said, I'm telling you, he's, he's not dead. I said, and, and well, wasn't that before um, he was like captured in the whole jail thing? This happened. No, that was when they had, you know, remember when they had his picture up on the thing and it was his old picture and the FBI was like, if there's any more victims of Epstein, call in like 2000, what, 19 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> FBI had that picture and I was like, I called her up. I said, why do you have an old picture on there? I said, if you caught him. You know, yeah, they caught him and he was supposedly in the jail over there in Brooklyn. I said, I said, who are you kidding? I said, I would like to report something though. Yes. Are you a victim of Epstein? I said, AKA Jim Norris. I said, I would like to report that Epstein has an alias of Jim Norris. I said, he was under the name Jim Norris running his Ponzi scheme, the Seed A Rays. So, I so said, you, you were sent to the hospital twice for evaluation for yeah. su like suicide. Basically, he, you know. And I'm going to tell you why they let me out two hours early, because, you, you know, usually they would have kept you. You're sitting in the hospital telling them. I'm telling you right now, that person, uh, if they claim he's sitting in jail, he is Jim Norris. And he's and I'm showing them the picture. Okay. I told them, if I ever get proven right, I will own this. Go ahead and keep me tonight. I dare you to do it. Because if, if I get proven that that is Jeffrey Epstein and I'm right, you're all your jobs are gone. I am not delusional. I am not on, go ahead and drug test me. Go ahead and test it by of alcohol. Go ahead and test anything you want to test, but I will stand on this word till the day I die. If I'm right about what I'm saying, and I'm right that I have been abused and I'm being terrorized and there is somebody in fact after me, all of you, I'm coming after all of you legally. So you go ahead and try to keep me here today. 
But when so, I looked, when I left, they 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 didn't say anything. They didn't tell me I had a diagnosis. They they didn't say any of that. It was deep in the back of the paperwork where it said dis, dis, uh, delusional disorder. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have to put something, I guess. But so you go home and and we move forward in time. What happens next? And if any of them ever see this video, and that's to Atlantic, <laughs> City, and that that would be toward Atlantic City, New Jersey, over there. Yeah. Okay. okay okay so <laughs> like i said before don't mess with the jersey girl and i kind of meant it so <laughs> yeah. okay so uh what happened uh next like he retaliated more didn't he yeah 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 well it, it was constant well it's all of them you know it's a big group yeah they were a big happy mobster family that's what they are yeah yeah Okay, so then we go about our business and you're getting gas and you start to hear another group of zombie-like people give other messages, right? Well, this is, you know, this is before because, I mean, you know, well, I mean, this is a mix. I, I skip parts, you know. In yeah, the yeah. Meantime. But yeah, yeah, we had Jim Norris. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, man, should we get to that? That person? Well, yeah, whenever, like, we just have to kind of keep moving it forward. Like, let's not focus, we focused a uh, 40 minutes on Jim Norris. Like, okay, just like okay. we got the story. Well, Jim Norris was kind of important, you know? I mean, yeah. there's more to Jim Norris, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So <laughs> what I'm trying to get to is what other retaliation did he do against you and your family? Okay. CPS. Well, that's a pretty big one. That's what I'm trying to get to. So what happened? Okay. So then, okay. So then you have July 17th. Well, it was July 18th, but I say July 17th because on the, the paperwork that they handed me uh, eventually, it says July 17th, there was another anonymous phone call. Because during this time period, we would have a lot of anonymous phone calls about, you know, there's been complaints, uh, noise complaints, or this complaint, that complaint of all sorts. CPS was complained uh, came to the house multiple times. Th that the time they came and did what they did was not the first time. It was multiple anonymous phone calls for no reason. Okay, but not only that it would be noise complaints, um, cops being called for no like one time specifically. Literally, the cops were called anonymously again. We were saying, reporting, oh, people are fighting up there. There's domestic violence or something going on. Me and the children were not home. Nobody was in the house. We were walking back with bags in our hands, okay? And we're walking up and cops are coming down. And I said, excuse me, were you just up at, they said, yes, are you Lydia Dorman? I'm like, I can't believe it. Here we go again. <laughs> you know, and they're like, yeah. And they're, I, and I said, yes, I am. And they said, okay, um, who's upstairs? I said, no one that I know. Of. Why? They said, well, we just had a call that there was a, you know, a, a lot of noise up there, that there was a domestic violence situation going on. People are fighting and everything. I said, well, you're welcome to come back up there with me. I said, We've been out, sir. I said, you guys keep getting these phone calls and they've been all lies. I said, now you're getting one that's saying, I said, how long ago did that phone call come in? They said about 10 to 15 minutes ago, we rushed right here. I said, well, sir, we were down the block at this store. I lifted up the bag, showed him the name of the store. The store's 20 minutes away. So if we went to the store, that's 20 minutes to get there. We shopped at the store. That's however long. We came back to the store. That's another 20 minutes. How was that How was that happening 20 minutes ago? Yeah, yeah. So, so here's the thing. I said, you want to come up and see if there's anybody in there? I said, maybe you should anyway, in case there's somebody else in there that broke in and causing the disturbance and it isn't us. I said, because, you know, all these anonymous calls that you're getting, these lies that you're getting. So who who's doing this? Who's who's calling and purposely harassing the hell out of us? 
and pinning all of this on us. Right. I said, this is a character assassination, obviously. I said, you all, your police department and other agencies have continuously gotten calls in reference to my family, to myself, my children, or whoever in my household. And none of it checks out. We're not even home. I said, can you explain? Well, you know, yeah, you should, you know, if you want to complain about that, you know, you'd have to do this and do that. I said, I shouldn't have to. Why don't you? I said, you're here. You should be putting this in the report. This isn't right. You're a witness to the fact we weren't home. You just came out and had to waste your time because we're not here. I said, I will also complain, but you should also be saying something about right, it. Right. It's not right. How so many times? So then when, when did they come basically? To 17th. Okay. July 17th. It was yep. on the paperwork that a supposed call came in. Right. That now here we go again. I was going to kill myself and the children. Well, you, they didn't show up till July 18th, by the way. So mm -hmm. here's my thing. If I was going to kill myself and the children, you idiots, OK, and I have the paperwork for all this, for all those who would like the proof and evidence, just uh, in yeah. case, it's on my page. Um, paperwork, their paperwork at that. It ain't mine, idiots. OK, so July 17th, an anonymous call comes in. She's going to kill herself and the children. Well, dum-dums, you wait 24 hours to get there? Well, thank God we're not dead, stupid. Um, <laughs> I mean... Now, yeah. medical terminology, that would be considered a stat emergency yeah. phone call, okay? Yeah. Because if somebody's going to kill themselves, they're suicidal, and somebody else, that's homicidal, idiot. So, therefore, that's a stat emergency phone call. They should have been out there on the 17th immediately to check and make sure that both parties were okay. They should have immediately had an evaluation on the person that the allegation was on and separated from the person, the people that they were going to commit the crime against as well, right, right, made right. sure that all parties were safe and everything was cool and went from there, made a decision from there, whether it was founded or not. They didn't do that. Okay. Now you come the next day, the 18th at about three something in the afternoon it checks out that the parties are, thank God, alive because no thanks to you, idiots. They wouldn't have been. Um, and the we answer the door. I answer the door. And I'm like, I'm going to what? I said, well, no, we're actually, we were actually getting ready to go to Jersey because my birthday, July 19th. And we were going to get go to Jersey to do some stuff, right? And um, the kids were like, in the background, like, oh, no, not again, because they're so sick of these calls now. Yeah. They're in the background. Like, this is ridiculous, right? So, you know, and then they're like, well, can we talk to the kids? And the kids are like, we don't want to talk to them. And I'm like, oh, man, I, you know, it is what it is. Like, we got to go, like, whatever. You know, so they're they're talking to kids. The kids are like, you, you know, we're tired of this. Like, you know, this and that. But, um... You know, I'm like, okay, anything else? Like, obviously, this ain't going on here. I said, we're going, we're, we're going to get something to eat. We're getting ready to go. Like, we're packing here. We're doing things. Okay, well, we still need to see you, you know, sometime in a couple of days. I said, well, look, we're going to Jersey. Can't do it the 19th. I'm going for a couple of days. Like, it's going to have to be some other time. <laughs> like, you know, it is what it is. She's like, okay, well, we'll do it in a couple of days, this and that. Fine. Can you sign these papers? Oh, on the papers, it had the allegations. I said, I'm not signing that. Why not? Because it's not true. Why would I sign this agreement with you and a safety plan of allegations that aren't true? Why am I going to sign that? I don't have to sign that. It's not true. That's like me agreeing to a crime that I didn't commit. Right. I'm not doing it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just not. So I ain't stupid. 
the hell is wrong with you? But anyway, so she, they said, okay, well, you have a good day. We'll see, we'll see you, you know, then on the day, whatever, when we said, okay, we're packing this and that. This idiot is going to come back at seven o'clock with the cops. Now, we're still not dead. Keep in mind, just please remember that. We're still not dead. Nobody's dead. We're still alive. In fact, is it 2024 from 2018? Damn, I'm still not dead. Neither are they. Oh, wow. I guess I guess that's really an unfounded uh you know yeah, accusation. Yeah. Okay. Unfounded. But anyway, so um they come back at seven o'clock talking about we have something to take the kids. When I asked her to see the papers, she told me no. I said, no. I said, what the hell do you mean? No. She told me we're taking them because you're a crazy. I said, you come back here and tell me after you told me you'll see me on this day, after you come to the house with these crazy accusations that you're taking the kids and not going to show me a paper, you kidnapping psychopath, and you tell me I'm crazy? Yeah, yeah. I said, do you hear what you sound like? Yeah. I said, you're, you're out of your mind, lady. They take, they take Clifford, the youngest one, and they left her. She was only 17. She's autistic. And it's like she is 10 years old being autistic. 17 is still a minor. Autistic, you know, like she's 10, but she's a minor. So ask yourselves this. If I was going to kill myself and that was really true, that was the real reason. And I was going to kill them. I guess I could have killed myself and I could have killed her too. Me and her could have been dead because they left us standing in that parking lot and with a reason and a motive now because they just took him. How do so, you think? So were you outside in the parking lot when the, they came back that time? Like how did no, they- No, I, I was, I was um, packing the stuff. I was about to put it in the car. And they came, they were here, they were like, I was opening the door and here they were walking up. There they were, right there. He, so they took Clifford and he, he, he basically never got him back. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so undocumented, unethical, the whole thing, illegal. Then they have the papers marked July 19th for my birthday, like happy birthday, bitch. Excuse my language, but yes. So, 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 and then on the papers, think about it. So on the papers, it says July 17th, the phone call comes in and the paper, and really you took them July 18th, but you know, the papers are marked July 19th. So really think about it. How important was it? But you didn't take her till the 19th either, because you only took her because I went to the, um, psychologist psychiatrist where I went to get anxiety pills you know and um when they gave me a note stating that I don't present with any and I haven't presented with any suicidal or homicidal ever in their office um whatever you know problems and I, I've never had a problem and I always go there I get my anxiety medication I don't I have no problems and this and that when I got the note from them to bring over to there, you know, um, I went over there, you know, she was in the background yelling, give me back my brother, you know, um, you, you know, she probably heard me talk to the counselors like, how are you going to take one kid and not the other? That proves that you are just beyond guilty. She said that. And then they were like, oh, shoot, you know, that's when they grabbed her like, man, we're going to be, you know, if she leaves and go, they probably, it probably dawned on them. If she leaves and goes to Jersey with that kid. We're screwed. So how that, long, and that's you know. How long did they have her? She she was 17 then. So they released her when she was 18 back to your your custody, right? Nope. nope. So how how'd you get her back? 
I went and got her after, which which um that was a uh, uh another uh problem. Um, but I, I went and got her from this. Uh, she was in this um place for you know disabled people. But I went and got her from there because she was overage. I was able to get her there from there, and um, a couple people helped me to do that. But they were talking a lot, telling me, you know, because they read notes from these people, like, if I'm I'm this and I'm that, you know, I'm crazy. They got me documented, like, I, I, I'm a, a, a mental nutcase. You know, and I'm just I can't, like, mm. I can't even imagine going through all of that. And I mean, there's more. Yeah. That's the problem. There's more. But right. He, well, here's the thing. When oh it comes to these agencies, I'm going to tell you like this. When it comes to these agencies, their go to is gaslighting and mental health. So what they'll do, that's what, where we get into the targeted individual program. OK, their go to is to target an individual, to gaslight the individual, something surreal, to surround the person with a bunch of things and make it virtually impossible for that person to maybe prove that it's going on, such as these, these non-coincidences, these calms that they give, these things that they've been surrounding with me with, right. Right. that it's happening we are we're, it's it's happening to you it's happening to you it's happening to you but try to prove it i dare you lydia try to prove it you yeah. know and then you reach out like yo something's going on around me something's happening something's happening but you know nobody's going to believe you just like it in a regular relationship when a person is doing something to you it's the same thing but imagine it on steroids because these people like imagine you're with that person in a relationship right and you know that person that you could be with and it's like they're doing stuff to you in your home or in a relationship and it's like and nobody sees it but you because every time you get around people they act so sweet they act so nice and nobody sees what they do to you but you and you're like dying to get them on you're dying to get get evidence of them doing something or you want somebody to see them doing what they do to you so bad because it's like people need to see it because every time they get around people they're the nicest person in the world and everybody thinks Everyone thinks that you have the best boyfriend or girlfriend in the world because they're just like, they are, they, they know how to turn it on. Right. But you know that when they're alone, they're the monster of all monsters. Right. right. Imagine that on steroids, because that person has the power and money of God knows what behind them. And they could run a conspiracy that would just, it's beyond your belief right. behind them. That's what this is. And what they'll do is they'll, these agencies, they'll target the person. They'll gaslight the hell out of the person. Then the person does it. You're a human being. So any human being is going to start telling somebody and reaching out, right? They're going to start going for that help. They're going to start reaching out wherever they could. And when certain people don't listen, then they're going to get on the internet and they're going to reach out for help. They're going to just reach out wherever they can to tell what's going on. They're going to feel like scared and isolated and alone. They're going to start telling the story, right? And then what's going to happen is they're going to look crazy or whatever. But here's the thing too. What happens too is the go-to is to discredit what the person is saying because in a discredited person is it it means that the person has no truth to what they're saying, which will automatically protect the agencies and protect them in their in, in what they're doing, in their abuse and everything. And nobody will listen to them. They'll automatically say, oh, don't worry about it. That person is off their rocker. That person just don't listen to them. Everybody just brushes the person off. They don't want to hear it. That's it. And the agencies or whoever, the abuser, the terrorizer, the whatever, gets away and could continue it. And if they could just put these people over like this, you know, one person's over here, one person's over here, one person's over here, and just hide these people away, they could keep taunting and abusing whoever the hell they want. Right. Bullshit. So basically around 2017, 2018, like it's like somebody up the amps of pain in your life. 
uh, you had all these things happen and you couldn't really get assistance from anyone. So I know, I know that was a rapid awakening for you because, um, you know, let me tell you something. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy and I'll tell you why, but it's not a self fulfilling process prophecy they make it a self-fulfilling prophecy why do i say that because they're putting it on you want to she wants to kill herself she wants to kill herself no they make you want to kill yourself yeah okay see they'll make what they're putting on you and projecting on you then they'll make you say you know what you're right i do want to kill myself because because of what they're doing yeah yeah so basically um uh, they took Clifford away. You you still haven't received him back. He is he just turned eighteen a couple of days ago. Just turned eighteen. Yep. But he's um, doing that music stuff. Yep. And see now that's another problem. It's like he turns eighteen, and I have a feeling that somebody's saying because of what I'm talking about and what I'm doing, mm, don't talk to her too much. Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, we don't know if, if I remember correctly, he was put into a home where the man there was a uh, like a an abuser. If that's not. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. That's actually uh, the grandfather. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, he had hauled off before and broke foster kids arms. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so you have tried to get him out consistently. And so I met you maybe two I don't even know two or three years ago and you were working on getting him out that was really your agenda how to get him back and you needed help well my, my, yeah my thing is I knew that reporting it regularly wasn't going to work right. because obviously they have an agenda there's an agenda me, I'm not dumb yeah. um and and the prior times, like like I said, reporting it to the FBI, I see how that goes, reporting it this, every time I do something, you know, whatever. So I go this way or certain routes, right? Reach out certain routes, right? Um, and I know that it's gotten in the hand. My stuff has re reached the hands of um, like the most high people, you know, the, all the people that need to know. Right. And uh, um, they know, they got it, okay? Yeah. Why nothing has been done is completely outrageous. Right, right. right. Bottom line. And no we've story. got a, a fairly complex story because we're not done yet. But right. yeah, uh, and even you and I were on the phone once. I, I contacted several news reporters and uh, intel providers, all these people. Literally nothing. Nothing happened. It was cricket. So nobody really wants to step up to the plate. Now, either they don't want to for, you know, they're being controlled, they're being watched, or they're just, you know, they don't believe your story. But let's tell the rest of the story. So um, fast forward a little bit, then you start hearing other zombie like people, uh, you know, give you these little statements. And from what you told me before, they were like zombies. They were like being controlled in some fashion. And it was multiple times per day, all day long, wherever you went, these like zombie guys, we'll call them, would uh, come up and give you the same exact wording. So what, do you know what I'm talking about? The, the same wording? Yeah, they'd say, must be nice to be Trump's daughter. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. You want me to do that? Okay. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> sorry i had i, not, I, had, I didn't um, want to do I, I wanted you to do it but you know yeah 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 no i'll do it i'll do it, but i'm sorry i had uh one call come in and i had to tell that person to keep on uh whatever but i had this it was a, an extremely large creature texting you know extremely large creature that eats all day he was texting that large creature oh <laughs> you're bad you're so bad not okay. really you know yeah. it, i mean well, you know, if I didn't text him back, I was scared that he would just keep eating and eating and eating all day. You're bad. Not really. Yeah. He knows who he is. Yeah. Just keep okay. eating and eating. Okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> fatty schwole. So as I was saying, yeah. Okay. So the president thing, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah they, oh, yeah. You know, I'm making a hit song, by the way, but we'll talk about that after this. We heard your song. You heard it? I did hear it. 
I know. Yeah. So I know it, you know, it, it came for such inspiration. <laughs> well, let's get the story out to those that haven't heard it. Yeah, and then 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 we could promote the song, you know. Anyway, <laughs> you know, I might I might have to start, you know, I don't rap. I'm not a rapper. I, I'll do the yeah, singing yeah. thing, you know. But you know, I'm now I'm gonna think about starting a hip hop career. You know? Maybe. Okay. Uh, no, let me start. Okay, so okay, so then it started with that person. So I, I, okay, after I narrowed down the Helter Skelter, Manson, look at your game, girl. Then we moved on. All of a sudden, they start playing something else. And here we are. And I start going out. And, oh my God. And everybody starts flooding me, whether it's the gas station, uh, whether it's the mall, whether it's just on the street, even outside the complex. Um, all of a sudden, now before before this, it was all Manson, right? Nobody was surrounding me with any of this. It literally just switched like a three sixty, like phew. like all of a sudden, it's like everybody became a Trump fan overnight nobody was a trump fan around me no one oh and now he was already in office keep that in mind he was right. already in office so it's not like oh trump's running for president let's everybody we support trump no he was already in office running that big mouth he's got he's got a big mouth now look he's already in office running that mouth and overnight everybody's wearing MAGA hats. Everybody's walking around with the, with the Trump stuff and the, you know, Trump stickers on the car, you know, the MAGA stuff. And I'm, I, you know, I just start at first, it didn't dawn on me. I'm just, you know, and then I'm like, what the hell is going on around here? Everybody's like, you know, and then, you know, they're playing the things I'm walking in stores. They're talking about his rallies you know with the rallies going oh are you gonna watch trump on tv tonight and i'm saying who the hell cares like because i you know what i mean like i mean i'm not you who cares you know i'm not used to hearing it because it wasn't surrounding you know now i'm used to hearing about a serial killer now i gotta hear about him all day every day all day every day that's how they really started it with just flooding the go, 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 you know, Trump, you know, and I'm like, everybody around here is a damn Trump fan. The hell's going on? You know, so I'm like, whatever, to each their own, man. Not that I had a problem with, you know what I mean? I'm just wondering what the hell just happened, you know, then it started. People bumping into me or just walking up to me or this weird stuff, man. I mean, literally just coming up and saying, it must be nice to be Trump's daughter <laughs> with their country accent. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm thinking, I ain't even gonna lie. The first lady that I thought she was drunk as I thought, I thought there was something really wrong. And I'm thinking, who in the shit is she talking? Like, that's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm like trying to get away from her. I'm like, man, this lady's crazy. Yeah, you know, I'm out of there. You know, I'm thinking, man, I'm out of here. And I'm thinking, if anybody's crazy, it's these people, man. I'm the hell out of here. You know, got in the car real quick, hell out of there. You know, I go to the mall. They're, you know, and they're like, oh, you know, like, I wonder, you know, I used to wonder about Trump's kids. And I'm like, who the hell cares about Trump's kids? But I'm like, that's odd. Whatever. Go, oh, whatever. Go home. They start. Then it's him that shows up on the YouTube. Whether it was hate stuff, you know, because they have the hate stuff on Trump or love stuff. It's Trump stuff. And I'm saying, oh, my God. All I see is the face, the hair. I mean, stupid stuff, too. They had the, the ones with the hair. It's like, Zoom, you know, like whatever, you know, like whatever right. it was. It's just his face and mouth going like just ridiculous. 
I said, oh no, they're starting with a new one. Now it's Trump. That I started real. I said, now it went from Manson to the Trump. I said, I can't believe it. They're starting with Trump now, you know? So then it's like, okay. And then I go out and they started again the next day. With it must be nice to this and that. And I'm saying, what in the hell? And I'm like, somebody's messing around, man. I said, this is getting wicked now. I said, this is out. This is this is sick, sadistic crap, man. I'm like, this is out there, man. You know, and I'm just like trying to like, I would walk fast away from these people. After I'm like, man, I got to get out of here. You know, so I'm like, this is insane. So it would just, again, so like I said, it would go from, say, this, so if I'm at a restaurant, then I'm at the Walmart, then I'm at whatever, it's from this place to this place, this place. If I was traveling from, say, North Carolina to Jersey, it follows. I got to stop in between states. They say, go to the bathroom or get gas or go stop to get something to eat, whatever. It's stopping in the states. It's literally following me from state to state. They would literally make sure they would pull up with the Trump flags or whatever and get out and say something in different states. That's how you know, like, man, this is following me, man. This is impossible. It would follow me there. It would be there and it would follow me back. They were rolling. They were rolling heavy, man. Right with me. I've never seen an operation. That's when I and that's when it dawned on me, like, I don't know who in the hell. I know, or they, no, I don't know that. They know me. Who the hell could possibly know me with this kind of power and this kind of money? Because it's not the doctor down the street that could pull some crap like this off. Who the hell can run an operation like this? So if I remember correctly, you know, like before Jeez. you had these zombie people let's call them uh controlled they're people zombies. up and say the they're name is saying. george now they're saying must be nice to be trump's daughter yeah you're, you're surrounded by trump stuff all the time but people are saying that specifically to you yeah yeah like how many, at like, first i thought it was my grandfather or something i said what are they saying he's my grandfather like father that can't be my father get the hell out of here Okay. Like I was in total denial. I'm not even gonna lie. I said, this is impossible, man. Come yeah. on. Like I was not believing this. I swear I really was. So I said, maybe they they mean grandfather or something. Like maybe they mean something else. Like this is impossible. But then I started really, I'm like thinking, I'm like, okay. I'm thinking about all these events. Like I'm saying to myself, somebody is literally in my phones like hat. Like there's something that, like I'm being hacked. And I have caught like following me like this operation around me is so sophisticated like i said it it's not your doctor down the street it's not your regular lawyer like this is some high level military operational like you have to have some serious high level power you have to have some money behind you you have to have like whoever knows me it's directed to me because like i said Everywhere I go, it don't matter if I'm in different states. I've proven that on my page. I could be in this state, that state, wherever I go, it's it's there. So I'm like, whoever's doing this, they definitely know me. And they definitely have to have some high level and some serious cash. Who the F could pull that? So I'm thinking, well, it has to be somebody in that kind of category, like the Trump category to this category. Who the hell else could pull something like this off? So even well, when we get to another name, when they started putting this other name in there, I'm thinking, I mean, who, it's got to be like the, I mean, like maybe it is real. Like that's how I came to the fact and conclusion that, okay, well, maybe it is real because those are the only people, like that's when I said, well, I am, I was physically told I am adopted. Okay. So there's these, all these weird things that have happened and certain things I was told, and then I am adopted. So could it possibly be 
that I do belong to certain people. And those people are people of this stature. You know what I mean? And that is why who knows me that I don't know about. Because if I'm adopted, that means I may not know about you, but you know about me. You know, because the only thing I can think of to explain some kind of operation like this, you, someone knows about me that has that kind of power. The only people that can't have that kind of power and that kind of money, it's not going to be the average person. Right, doctor. right. It's not. You, about, it's about how, type of people, man. I, I mean, who the hell else can do that, man? About how long did this uh, Trump uh, piece go on for for a hot minute like whew. weeks days well, weeks. no 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 like that it, it's still no. going on yeah I'm not, I know not that. Like that not like yeah. that but but the man that when it took me a while to sit with that so they hammered that man for probably like eight months or more because I, I like I kept going back and forth I'm not even lie. so I would admit it and then I'd be like nah so then they would start it again, like hardcore, like, oh, that, like, I guess in their, their minds, they probably like, damn it, we almost had it. Like, bam, go, go at her again. You know, because I would be like, that is impossible. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, nah, I'm going to ignore it. And then, then, then it, they would go at it again, like, boom, hit her again. You know, so I'm like, no, so, maybe it's so basically you know. what happened is you heard it so many times that like, you kind of awakened to that concept or that idea. When did you start having the like the belief system that Trump was your father? Okay. Um, when they hammered it and hammered it and hammered it so much. So I decided to, I said, you know what? I'm going to put something out. I'm going to start throwing stuff out there and see what I get back. So it's like I had this motto in my head, like, I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to go fishing at you now. I'm going to start. Oh, I'm going to start throwing things at you and see what you do. So when you when they started, here it is, when they started saying things to me that he would say at his rallies later that night, and when they started saying things to me that he would post on his at real Donald Trump Twitter account. So, for instance, I was going to the mall, right? I'd go to the mall and before he started using pencil neck Adam shift, right? Perfect example. Really perfect example too. Before he started using that, they'd walk up to me and go pencil neck. And I'm like, what in the hell does that even mean? You weirdo. And an hour later, They'd send me the clip, like uh, the clip would mess. Seriously, here's Trump, pencil neck Adam Schiff. He what you know, and I'm like, holy, you know. And there it goes, just flooding around, you know, or, you know, it'd be a couple of days later, you know, or here it is. I say certain things, um, in front of certain people, or why I'm out. And next thing you know, Trump's using the word. And I'm like, whoa, Jack. You know, or um, I would get a whole line. They would say a whole line that he's using at his rally. Right, right. Like three days before his rally. And a perfect example, which is on my page, they've done it too. Like this guy, Savage, Savage Dog, had, um, he, he calls himself that Savage Dog on telegram he said to me on a text message if you're trump's daughter i want trump to say savage oh. and i said yes and i said well yeah even on truth social or anywhere just anywhere it wouldn't matter he goes yeah anywhere i don't care i love that dude i want to say you know you know playing around and it's on text message and i said yeah you know and he was like yeah i'd have a heart attack it'd be so funny you know I think it was two days later, two or three days later. He's at the rally and he says something about uh, one of the illegal aliens coming in. He goes, I, um, some, a savage illegal alien 
did something, something while walking his dog. That's a savage dog right there. Said his whole name. Two or three days later. Because, oh, yeah, Savage was like, that would mean your phone's being tapped. My phone's being tapped. If he's really your father, I want him to say my name. That's what he says. I want him to say Savage. Savage. Yeah. Right? And he said it. Not so a, he, he yeah. does it all the time. Yeah. So mm -hmm. basically, you come to the realization that Trump is your dad. All right. Right. And then then I'm not going to rely. I'm not going to relay the source. Um. However, well, I'll go back. There's two things, two things. So what I did was another phishing thing that I did is I went on to his Twitter and I said, which is also on my page for people to look, the savage things on my page. And this one I'm about to say is on my page too. I went on to his Twitter. I think, uh, was it 2019? I think it was whatever. And I said um, something about what about, I responded to a Twitter post. I said, what about your unknown daughter? Um, what I say, what about your unknown daughter? Does my life matter or something, something like that? And um, his very next tweet, like 15 minutes late, something like that was Daughters of the Heartland, right at his unknown, um, at his at real um, Donald Just Trump chills. Yeah. Twitter, right? And yeah. then, yeah, yeah. So, and then, um, there was something it lined up with the Q too, Q post because they did it on my birthday because I used a certain word and they put the word on my birthday and then they put God bless America, like in a, something with verified something. But then besides that too, because that's, that's what I would do to fish for like, to see if he would throw the, like something back. And he usually always did. And I'm like, this is why, like, what the hell is going on here? Right. And then, um, oh yeah. And then there's this Andrew story too, because this guy, Andrew, who came up to me last Easter looks, I have a picture of him. It's on my page. He looks like the guy that was standing next to Trump. Um, in, where, where was Trump? I, I don't I don't remember where Trump was. At Scotland. No, yeah, I do. In Scotland. I could show you the picture. It's on my page though. He yeah. came up and told me. He said, came up to me on Easter. In fact, look it up because there was an EBS that went throughout Florida, like right after like a what, a week or two after Easter. And we got that thing. Oh, sorry for the EBS. Sorry for the EBS from Ron DeSantis. Andrew came up to me, oh, oh, there's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be an EBS. Ah. And there was in Florida, at least. Oh, it wake, woke everybody up at four in the morning and he apologized for it. Well, that guy, Andrew, came up to me and was like out of nowhere. He gets out with his MAGA hat at Walmart. He gets out with his Trump stickers cue on the back of his car. And he just looked at me and heads right over. He goes, Beware the great awakening. And I said, what? I just whipped out my camera. I'm like, what the hell is this, man? And I'm like, here we go. It's another one of these creatures, you know? And, and literally, and I'm like, wait, who are you? What? He's like, gotta watch out. There's gonna be a great awakening. Do you know about the great awakening? Do you know about the, like any, and I'm like, what the hell? This was last Easter, last Easter. And and literally there was an EBS right here in Florida. We and, But he looks, he, I'm telling you, he is that guy standing next to Trump. I'm telling you, he is. So, so then, I, I can't make it up. So then, um, but there's another guy that um, he, how can I do this without giving his name? Oh, damn it. Oh, I don't want to give his name. Let's okay. just put it this way. He, he, he uh, has affiliation with certain individuals. Uh, you know, in the realm, and he was he verified that it, it is. So I, I'm just this. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, you know what I mean? And he also verified that they all know. And there's a lot of blackmail going on. Yeah, bomb on. Okay, but well, along with you know the uh the other person we all know. Yeah, let's know. hear it. Let's hear it. Keep going. Like, I don't even have to talk. You just. <laughs> yeah. 
The yeah. other person we know, everybody knows on here, mostly everybody knows on here, he yeah. knows. Yeah. That that Mr. Wonderful over there knows. Are you, you know? talking about Smarty? Yeah. Okay. He knows. Well, I'm not talking about him. The first one right. isn't him, but the, the right. second one is him. Yes, he uh -huh. knows. And then that other person, he, yeah. he knows certain individuals amongst all of them as well and has yeah. they have handed certain things and documentations and legal like things like hardcore stuff and i mean comic you know what i mean and there's blackmail like i mean literally and i mean i was specifically told they all know you are not the unknown daughter in fact i, I mean you're not they he told me you're not the unknown daughter you right. are the known daughter amongst them all and there's a lot of blackmail going on right Right. And that's why. And we had talked about that on the phone or something a few weeks ago. It's like, you know, you were trying to do that um, petition and we we uh, emailed everybody and we called everybody. Blah, 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 blah. I was trying to help and no one responded, but they really can't at this point. You know what I mean? So right. I think down the down the road, it's going to be a, a, a totally different story. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But. Uh, Okay. So basically you find out this news. It takes you months of like going back and forth and then you decide, okay, I think this is real. And so you test the water with these tweets and this and that, and you get confirmation. He says savage. He says a uh, daughter of the heartland and some other stuff. And yeah, uh, there's so a lot more, but yeah. You know. Well, well, we just want to get the story out for mm -hmm. those that have been waiting right. for three weeks. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so then, um, uh, what happens from there? Once you start to believe what happens then? Um, well, that's when I start, you know, saying to myself, okay, well, if this is what it is, which, okay, it is. All right. So then I'm saying, well then, oh shit! Like now, what? Like what the hell is going on? Right. You know, like okay. And then I'm saying, all right. There's some really not good people after me. Oh shoot! What do I do now? <laughs> you know, like uh oh. And I'm like, this is really not good, man. You know. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man. And I'm thinking, well, what the hell is he going to do about it? You know, I mean, that's the first thing anybody's going to think, because here, here you are, right? And you're thinking, well, that means his enemies are looking this way. Man, that's some really big enemies right there now. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. the hell am I going to do about that? Yeah. That that's really not good. So then you're thinking, well, what the hell is he going to do about it? Who the hell is going to do something about it? So now you're saying, okay, now you're waiting for somebody to step in and help you. Because here's the thing, you know, a lot of people could pass judgment and say, well, you're, you could, you know, you should be able to do something for yourself. You should be able to, um, okay. People need to start thinking like this, right? That would be okay. If you're in a normal situation, however, think of it like this, right? Everybody gets upset and defends a child, right? Against an abuser or an attacker, um, a pedophile or whatever, because why that child is what? innocent, helpless, defenseless, scared, um, can't defend themselves, they're, you know, all that, right? Okay, so if you have somebody, whether they're an adult or not, right, but they're up against an enemy that is way bigger than them, they didn't even know they had way more powerful, way more tougher you know an enemy that they also are defenseless against helpless against hopeless against that could take advantage of them that could literally rape them in every way 
that can leave them with nothing. Not one shred of themselves. Okay. That it can do the same exact thing to that person and their family. That that big, nasty abuser can do to that innocent child. Because that adult and their family is just as innocent and just as scared or just as easy to terrorize and abuse and take advantage of as that little child at this point because that that enemy is so much more powerful and has so much more resources and has so much more weight they're so much more bigger than this person the they could take so much more advantage of that person right right no why question. would you not fight for right. that person they because literally that enemy then turns that person into that child at that point they literally do that person is helpless against an enemy like that right. and without the correct support without the correct you know love nurturing caring support um financially emotionally um just everything everything okay if that person don't have a solid foundation and ground everything they're done and that's it yeah because they are that child at that point and that enemy is that big big scary scary abuser bottom right. line right. because you have to look at the here's the person and here's the enemy you have to look at the size of it and what what the capabilities are and the vulnerabilities versus the non vulnerability you have to look at what the fight is and that's it and what they can reduce somebody down to and bottom line so when i'm looking at that okay and you're looking you're saying you're really going to leave me out here like this i didn't even know this is an invisible enemy to me in the first place they all knew what they were in for Trump knows what he's fighting. He knows what he's in. He knows what he's up against. And so do the rest of them. I didn't even know I belonged to these people. I didn't right. even know I was involved in something like this. Yep. I didn't yep. sign up for this. Neither did my children. So you're really going to leave an innocent woman who didn't even have any, um, you know, I didn't sign up. I didn't prep for this. I, I don't have, you know. I don't have um, assets or anything to back myself up to fight against the enemy like this. You know, I don't have nothing to to do any, you know what I mean? I, I have no clue right. what I'm in for. Right. But you're really going to leave me out here. So, you know, I'm sitting here and the things I haven't even really discussed, what really has been done to me and my children. You know, even today something happened. And I'm on here and you guys can't even tell. So therefore, therefore, it's like, you know, I haven't even begun to, to say that. And it's like, you're leaving me, you're really, really going to do that when you have resources and no, you have knowledge. People perish for lack of knowledge. You really are going to leave me to perish for a lack of knowledge that I had no control that I didn't have. You right. guys didn't give it to me. Right. That's right. not right. So, oh, so let's, yeah. not cool. let's show the setting. Like your kids have been taken away, right? You basically got no job. You Your kids were taken away. Then you find out he's your dad and you're not getting any assistance whatsoever from anyone to get your kids back. Nothing. And, yeah. So, so like, just imagine the frustration and anger that you would feel like, the audience and I'm talking to them. Like, can you imagine how frustrating that would be? That would be insanely frustrating. And I can see why, you know, there's a great injustice here. So how did you find out who your mom was? Your biological mom? Well. <laughs> Come on. 
you know. Got to tell the story. I promised him three. Well, that person, you know, she ain't living good herself. Yeah. I've well, known her, known her for a hot minute. Um, you know, and, but I've known her, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. For a while. So, so uh, how, so you met her, you met her in her, she, like, we're going to call it. only 21 or 22. Yeah. yeah. I met her a long time ago, a while ago. Yeah. And, um, you know, but 2018, uh, she, uh, Cisco might laugh at this because he might know. She does not drink liquor, like hard liquor, but she does like her wine. But she don't drink hard liquors now, only wine. So, you know, we go into this, uh, wine store. I fast forwarded now because like I said, I've known her for a while, but she just came into my life as somebody you know, just a regular person and yeah. likes church and all that kind of stuff, whatever, whatever, you know, so I'm fast forward. Anyway, so 2018, we are in, um, you know, she had to go get her wine and we're in this, the liquor store getting her wine and um, somebody was running their damn mouth and they were trying to run it to her and she just looked at them and I was like, I turned to them and I said, why don't you just shut up? <laughs> and um you know because they were they were getting whatever and he tried to say something to me i'm arguing with him and she just turned around and was like boy you need to watch your mouth that's my daughter i will lay you out on this ground you hear me and i'm like <laughs> and then i just shut up because i'm like man i'm out of it forget it i'm done <laughs> because when she gets involved all bets are off i'm okay. done okay. she's way worse than me all right <laughs> so I, that's why no i'm not buying that for a second believe so, me was this incident in 2018 or was this way back when 2018 that incident okay so i said oh hell i'm done because <laughs> if she goes off i'm out of there <laughs> so you know that took care of that and i'm like mother you know but then people started giving me little clues about her. But then there's this one specific video. And when I looked at that video, I said, holy. And that's when I knew. I said, oh, shit. You know, but when she sings alone, you're like, well, it does make sense. And she always did have stories about Whitney. So I'm like, oh, well, maybe it is. I yeah. don't pay, yeah. you know. So I said, "Well, screw it. If it, I mean, the rest of this sits, the, the rest of this is happening. Why not just go along with the program from now on? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just that's what I started doing, like going along with the program, like whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> shall we tell people the name? Go ahead. You. Oh, I thought. Well, you know. yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I guess. Uh, Whitney Houston. Okay. I just got wicked chills as you said it. So yeah. basically the story goes, I think Whitney was maybe 14. 14, yeah, that's what, yeah. And she had you. If they ain't lying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, so, and you had, uh, like you said, when you were younger, you had uh, interacted with her. And of course, you have musical ability, as does she. And um, she would occasionally bring her, um, I guess, sisters or like. The uh, yeah, they, yeah, there, um, yeah, there was a bunch of uh, people that always came. Yeah. And I remember, yeah, because when I first started coming around to, I didn't take it as anything then because there was none of this going on. So yeah, years yeah. ago, you know, yeah. I just took it as like, oh, I remind them of Beverly. So. So what, uh, you know, like, you know how you meet people and they're like, man, you're just like a friend I know, like a friend of hers or whatever, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're not thinking of nothing, right? you know? So um, this one lady, she used to be like, oh, you're just like a little Beverly. And she used to always say that when I first started going around them. So like, like at 20, 21 or whatever, she'd be like, oh, you're just like a little Beverly. You're just so much like a little Beverly. And I'm like, oh, okay. So like, that I, didn't, it didn't click in with you. Like it didn't make it. Not, not one bit. Well, no, I mean, I just thought like, oh, I remind them of Beverly when she was younger. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. No big deal. Like, you know, somebody like, oh, you remind me of this girl I know, or you remind me of, oh, you act like her when she was young. Or what? Okay. Yeah. So basically, um, you hung out with her on occasion. She's living yeah, in a lot. Life. She she came around, you know, a lot, you know, acted like, like, you know, like a, like a spiritual mother would or like, you know, stuff like that. She'd come around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me show you something. She wanted to like um show me like like church stuff like that you know oh yeah interesting mm -hmm. all right all right so you know basically she told the clerk or whatever to shut their mouth because that was your daughter and that's Good like the God. first time you heard it and then you were like kind of questioning it and yeah because everything else was going on i'm finding out this person's that person that person's this person this person's that person the music business is this that person is this yeah. one like that's when all that was going on i'm saying well i'll just be damned yeah so it's not yeah. uncommon for people to fake their deaths especially when they're in a celebrity status it's not uncommon because yeah. we're going to hear another story in a couple minutes. I'm hoping, but oh. it's <laughs> Come on yeah, now. I know who you're trying to get to. And I'm like, yeah, but it's also like, like nothing that we read about in these like magazines at the uh, grocery store, that stuff isn't real. That's a fabricated background. That's a fabricated cause of death. Like nothing is what you've been told. And I guess that's the whole point of these stories is, you know, like you tried to go through your life and live a normal, quiet life and all these unusual things have happened. And as time went on, your eyes were more and more open and then you had the realizations and um, yeah. So you can see how unusual this story is getting. And um, all right. So do you want to uh, say like kind of what happened next? Oh, and one other thing I wanted to say, when we told this story before, um, Everyone was like, why don't you get DNA test? Well, duh. We love to have a DNA test. Okay. How are you gonna get, get how are you gonna get Donald Trump, the real Donald Trump? Okay, first of all, you got that issue. How are you get gonna get him to sit down and give you some DNA? I don't think that's easily gonna happen. Okay, so I offered we glad to do it. We'd be glad to do it. But, you know, like you I offered more than once. It was sent directly to. Um, yeah. The heck is her name? The one that's always with him. It was sent directly to him. It was also sent to his lawyers, too. But um, the, the lady that's always with him. Um, what is her name? Oh, shoot. I'll think of it in a minute. Give me a bit. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. And there's proof and evidence. Believe me. They yeah. all know. and think of it this way. I want people real quick. I got a call that's on my all over my pages too with E. Jean Carroll. I offered to give her my DNA to who, test who against her. E. Jean Carroll is Trump's accuser. Oh, that, oh, that oh, just oh. won eighty something million dollars. Yeah, dollars from him, right? I told her I have a call with her. It's on my thing. She says, "Oh, Lydia, I would I would love to come and meet you." Where? Ever you are, Lydia. I said, well, that's great. I said, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I said, and I will give you, I will help you too. I'll give you my DNA to test against your coat. All of a sudden, I have it on tape, by the way. All, you know, her, her you know. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, I became a kook. And then after that, see, she went from, look it up, people. They went from demanding his DNA to then banning his DNA from court. After I offered you DNA, then you want to ban his DNA? Why? Then, but, but see, she went from being really nice to me. Lydia, I have the text messages and everything. I want to, you know, I meet you anytime, any place. I offer you DNA and then you say, I need mental help. I'm being, you know, I, I'm not, I'm I, not I've been, being followed. I'm so, on your channel. So I've been watching it. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah. that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, lady, you're out of your mind. You're a lot. You know what I mean? Come on. I'm not no, the liar. No. You are. I offered DNA. So people now think about it this way. If you don't think that the biggest accuser who just won 80 something million dollars supposedly, you know, in court from, from Trump is not being tagged by the secret service. 
with all of her phone calls, all of her Twitter, all of her text messages, which include Lydia Dorm's petition, Lydia Dorm's claims, Lydia Dorm offering her DNA, Lydia Dorm saying, I'm Trump's daughter. Go ahead, Carol, let's do this. I want Trump to test. I want Trump to answer my claim. I want Trump to step in and do the right thing and everything else I'm saying. If yeah. you don't think Secret Service has all this, they haven't said nothing to me. Why don't they do something? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Okay. If they're all, if they've all been replaced, if they're not the originals, all right, that why would they step forward, right? right. You, you don't know whose DNA you're getting. You don't know, like, the, they could say it's from Trump. Do we really know that? So, yeah. So basically what my point right. was to the viewer is Lydia is super willing to do it, but how can you control those circumstances? You can't, you know? Yeah, you can't. But see, obviously something ain't right on the other end. Uh, you know, something's going on here because, yeah, you know, why is nobody coming forward to do anything? Meanwhile, yeah. you have a such a willing and outspoken party on this end. <laughs> Obviously, it ain't me that's hiding. Everybody runs from me. Yeah. And yeah. I ain't got a pot to piss in, a window to throw it out of, and a flower outside for it to say hi to. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go we got we've got that just. So basically, we wanted to set, I wanted to, you know, for the viewer to, you know, just imagine your situation, frustration, no one's helping you, you don't have resources, you don't really know what to do. And you can't get to the top people because they're not responding. So that's kind of where she's been at. Well, actually, I have gotten to the top people. That's the problem. They're using a high level, a high skilled thing called evasion. And why do they use evasion? I'm going to tell you because my stuff has gotten to the top tier people. And I know that for a fact, there's evidence. I have a whole list, which I will not release. Why? I'm not going to say that on here, but okay. anyway, there's Super a reason. Cool. However, it's, it's a high skilled thing that they're using called evasion. Because even if they were to say the words, no comment, somebody could report on that, that, hey, you know, and it could go mainstream yeah. go public and then my name is it then Lydia becomes uh a, a, you know popular and people will listen and people hear if they say nothing at all now people have to watch what they say in reference to anything about me and them because you know there could be maybe a lawsuit or whatever if if anybody like mainstream kind of says anything it had they really have to be careful what they say but even if one of them says the words no comment it is still considered a comment in the news media world bottom line so okay. what they do is use evasion to okay. hide something all right so let's move forward. Let's tippy tiptoe a little bit forward. No name calling. <laughs> so what happened next? Okay, I'll be good girl now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what happened next? What happened next? Uh, where were we? Well, you, you're you're getting the uh, must be nice to uh, be Trump's daughter. You're getting that. You're getting uh, you finally realize after a few months that he's your uh, father. You've realized what he's your mom. You're flipping out a little bit. But um, what else happened of import? Well, I just got told that people are at somebody's house right now. But that's besides the point. That's why I'm laughing. But anyway, okay. let's, let's celebrate. <laughs> no. Anyway, okay. I, we, you know, okay, so, oh God, do we have to go into that other person? Well, we're going to have to well, see. Actually, little... somebody just told me there's like somebody at, at their house watching right now. So if they are watching, let, yeah, let's go into that other person. Let's go into that. We, we can wait till the next time, but I did promise no. three names. So three names, three names. We got Donald Trump. We got Whitney Houston. And who should the third one be? Come on, the drums are rolling. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see, who should the third one be? Oh, well, <laughs> it, was Whitney. it was Whitney. No, that no, no, we got another name. Damn. All right. So, so uh, just tell the story. Yeah. It's similar all right, to the all right, other all right, 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 right. And, you know, so, just, we're going to get through it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. 
every time that person's name comes to the forefront of my skull. <laughs> okay, my 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 body starts to shiver. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you. Okay. You know, I start to just do the lean and my body starts to shiver. I'm telling you. Like, I mean, it's just, it's just such a thriller that <laughs> I, I just can't take it, you know? Yeah. Right. Really. All right. Well. You can do it. I just pictured him, too. I mean, it's like, felt like my bones were going to jump out of my skin. But, um, yeah, stop texting. Anyway, I'm talking to, he knows who I'm talking to. Okay, so, um, all right, that person, let's see, how should I even start that? It's so weird. That by far is the weirdest one out of them all. Yeah, yeah. That so, person is weirder than Manson, man. Mine so is the you, in the fridge. You were, that. like, going about your business and you would hear various songs uh, again, stuff on YouTube, um, the same kind of stuff. All of this, a very concentrated amount of, like, we'll call them clues, okay? And that, you know, that person right there is the most cryptic person in the world by far. I don't think there is a person alive. And that's a key word, too, right there. Alive. <laughs> That could <laughs> that can outbeat right that person. Right. That so, so just go person. on with the story and come on, just tell the story. Like I know, but I have to tease everybody. Okay. You have to what? Tease everyone. All right. That we person, have to... smooth boy. Yeah. That person. I mean, you don't know. Which way it's going to come from with that person? Well, so this you, person you, is a master of disguises. You got that right. And um, he could come fat. He could come thin. He could come young. He could come old. He could come as a man. He, he could come as a damn woman. Yeah. Master really? of disguises. Really? He could come black. He could come white. He could come at you. He'll listen. He'll come as a, I'm, you know what? He could come as the damn Easter bunny delivering eggs. Okay. I'm, I'm dead serious too. He could come. He could so come. So you're in the car, you hear a song. You're at the gas the station, time. you hear a song. You go to your TV, there's a song on. Um, your computer. They start, oh, no, no. They started sending, and, and like a dumbass, I fell in the trap too because I didn't know. All of a sudden, they start sending these things about him being alive, you know? And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I start telling the kids, I'm like, oh, you know, because Clifford loved him. Clifford would prat like do him all the time, you know, Michael Jackson. So I'm like, Clifford, do you know what? that? What? Michael Wait, was? did I? What? What word was that? What name was that? <laughs> yeah. I said, Clifford. I said, Clifford. Guess what? Michael Jackson might be alive. He's like. Really? I said, yeah. I'm watching it like an idiot falling right in the trap. Like, like, man, this is interesting. This is cool. Like watching all these videos with the stupid music going. Like, because they would put these stupid like musics down, like, like, like these like weird musics behind it, like whatever. And then like funny stuff like want it dead or alive, like posters of him, you know, want it dead or alive on it. Like all these things about him, like all these interesting things about how he like would do these cryptic messages about telling his fans he's alive, like all this stupid stuff. And I'm like, whoa, you know, and I'm like, wow, he's so smart doing it that way. Like I'm thinking, and then all of a sudden. Cause I'm watching it and I'm like, whoa, that's crazy, man. Like, wow, that's interesting though. And then, you know, they're talking about like why he would do this and that. But when I start going outside, okay. And I have people walking around in something you could clearly tell is a mask. Okay. Like, and I'm going, well, that's on. 
you know, like I like I mean, no, literally, like where you're laughing because I mean, it's like a big nose, like plastic damn nose. You can you see the damn strings like, <laughs> you know, like and it's walking past. And it's like like a fake mustache. And it goes, yeah, hey, how are you? You know, like and I'm like, the hell? <laughs> what is that? Like, you know, and it'll be like it will stand next to you and start talking like like or whatever like things like that like it'll just stand there talking to you like in a trench coat like looking like dick tracy or something like it looks crazy i'm telling you he thought he will have the weirdest stuff done man he's freaking out there man you know he, he, he i'm telling you he's freaking out there man so i mean people come up they'll, they'll open a newspaper with a fake mustache on the freaking nose with the string going freaking hat going freaking wig or something you know short wig it looks weird though you know and it'll be just stand next to you like so how are you today you know and you're like this ain't real like the hell and it'll have a weird conversation like it'll say weird things to like give you cryptic messages like you know i woke up feeling like i wasn't alive like something like that and you're like feeling like you weren't alive like you know like alive would be the you know or whatever like or they would even like something like you know better off dead than or, or no better off alive than dead like whatever like you're saying like things like you know or or you'd have like people walking past be like real hunched over walking with a camera like, oh, oh, you know it's queer with masks like 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 something like some part of the costume would like fall off I'm telling you to clearly like give the hint of disguises like and I'm just like the hell and then it's like it would it would go with whatever I was watching in reference to him on the YouTube I would play with it actually I'd say I wonder what they're going to put on today and then I'd go outside and see whatever they were doing would match the hell up because I was literally inter like I literally would be like like a test run. I thought, like, okay, let's see what are they talking about today, and go outside and see what the hell would happen to see if it would happen. And and I'll just be damned. There it was, a and I'm like, this is insane. So then I get on and I'm like, I get on this other thing, and and I'm like playing with this whatever. Then I'm like, yo. Why do I have this feeling like this motherfucker is like around or something? Like, I'm telling you, it was so weird, man. And then even like the kids, like Clifford's like, I don't know. I think Michael might be around this and that. I'm like, what? Uh, I'm like, all right, this is getting real out there, man. You know, and then all of a sudden, like there was a bunch of cryptic messages. I'm going to skip past because it's just too much, man. When I tell you though it was out there, the the music, the this lighting, glittered socks, people glittered socks, like crazy crap. And I'm like, yo, what the? I'm like, now Michael Jackson's in on it? What the hell is going on? Like, I'm telling you, it's just out there, man. And I'm like, this is effing nuts. Then this guy, Jeffrey Lee, comes along. That's his name, Jeffrey Lee. And then and then um, he comes, I didn't know, you know, whatever. But then he's just doing his thing or whatever. And it was Clifford, Clifford said, doesn't he look like the older, you know, when Michael was real young? I said, what are you talking about? And then he's going, huh, huh, like clearing his throat real loud, going like this, like making a scene of himself. And I looked at him, but Clifford pulled up this picture of him. And it's from like back and they've been like the off the wall albums. But like it wasn't from the album, though. It was like he had like a skiing kind of hat or something like he had something. I, I don't know what he had something. It was, so it wasn't the picture from the album. It was something. Right. And I looked at the picture and then I looked at him and I'm like, the hell? like it just looked it looked exactly like him, but just he was older. I got to be on. And I'm like. And I said, what in the hell is going on in this house, man? And that's when I said, you people are nuts, man. And there, that music started pumping outside. The, the freaking uh, Beat It or something started blazing outside. 
beat it. You know, and I'm saying, holy, sh I said, I'm out of here, man. I told him, I said, you all are kooks. Everybody in here is a kook. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Jeffrey Lee. So he came to your house multiple times. Yep. You guys like went out. I think you said karaoke, maybe. You went out and, you know, um, what else can you tell us? You probably don't want to know. Uh, what do you want now? Um, I'm whatever you want to tell people. I know what Smarty has said, and I want you know. <laughs> I'm scared to um, ask. No, no. I am scared to ask what Smarty said. Don't you know? Oh no, no I, I don't know. Oh yeah, I, I mean I know what Smarty says. He said that he's the father of your children. Oh well, you know. Okay, so whoever's watching this can test. Yeah, and and it's interesting because you have musical ability as do your kids. Yeah. Okay, so what else do you want to tell us about him? He drives me nuts. Okay, so have you seen him recently? He drives me. Have I seen Jeffrey Lee recently? Who the hell knows? He could be in disguise right now. Yeah. Well, we know he's in disguise. Yeah. We know he's bebopping around. Yeah. And, okay. So that's he could be in disguise. He could be like right, right there. I could have seen him recently. He only lets me know when he wants to. How, however, like this, I will say this, Michael. Jeffrey, whatever the heck you're calling yourself, whatever the heck you are, okay? I don't even care what you are, who you are, what you are, whatever it is. I am not playing your games anymore. <laughs> Either do it right or just don't do it. <laughs> like, enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would agree. No, I think everybody would agree at this point. Just do it. Like Nike says, just do it. Mm -hmm. There's no sense in any of this anymore. But I know I ain't playing your games anymore. Hell with that. When you say any of this anymore, like what are you talking about, though? Like specifically, what are you talking about? Okay. Oh, that. Okay, um, there's no reason that we all, meaning me, the children, and including himself, I got to be honest, including himself, should have to live like this no more. Yeah. See, I, I also speak for him, believe it or not. I mean, yes, me and the children, because, you know, we're completely innocent in all this. You know what I mean? And enough is enough. Like I said before, I mean, how could you leave? You know what I mean? Come on, man. Yeah. You know, financially, we, we don't have nothing. And people don't realize it when they see me on the interviews because I like to play around. I like to have whatever. I don't like to. I'm not this downer kind of person. I don't walk not around. Victim. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that all the time. I try to keep it up. I try to you know, keep the vibe up and the energy up, you know, but you, so I don't, people can't, whatever, but man, come on, you know, if it, you know, how much can re really, how much can one person take? How much abuse, terrorism and beaten physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, yeah. can one person take when you really really nothing you have is your own nothing mm -hmm. you know and then you don't even have your family or you, you know and you're just hanging on a thread and you just have nothing yeah. enough is enough and then when it comes to him too and these kids what the kids are going through it's really not good it's not and that wears on me too when I think of them it's not it's not healthy at all and people are messed up here they're really messed up yeah so it, it's time for somebody to do something and do something right 
And when it comes to him, honestly, it's not right either because it's like, you know, you're living your life. What is the time for you to actually live a life that's not bouncing here, there, playing all these roles and doing, you know what I mean? And, and just be able to really actually be who you are and do what you, you know, and if you yeah. want to be with your family, be with your family. If you want to do this and do that or live it, whatever, you know, like stop the charade. Can you imagine having, let's say, a ton of money and, and all the other good things, everything at your fingertips, but not being able to access it? Like everyone's after you right. for your money, for this, for that. Like they're all trying to grow. You have to actually fake your freaking death so that you can live. Like how crazy is that? And so it's many disgusting. celebrities have done that just so that they can survive. And they've lived very quiet, undercover lives. Well, I think that they're going to be coming out into the open soon. And I look forward to that, to knowing the true story. But they mm -hmm. have to be safe. You know what I mean? Right. And there's a lot of corruption out there they were exposed to. And we're seeing it out in the news right now, mm -hmm. starting to come out again. So it's coming. It's taking its time. Like, I would have liked to have this out you know, like yesterday, but mm -hmm. we, we're seeing the headlines now. Now, whether that starts the snowball effect or not, we'll, we'll you know, it's got to, it's got to. So I think yeah. that that has to happen before any of these guys can feel safe again to tell their story and to come out. And, and, and it's also my, my guess, you're not really going to have satisfaction until that time comes. Like you're going to be living your quiet life until that time comes. And then your life probably will change quite a bit. Right. See, I, and I don't even mind to say the quiet life that it is what it is. Yeah. But what bothers me is the fact that, you know, when you have to sit here and live where you have no control over anything, yeah. you cannot, you know, you got to worry about your kids. You have to worry about them struggling the way they are, worrying about their emotional and mental health. You have to worry about them going through what they're going through. If they're okay, you, you have nothing to help them. You can't help yourself. You have nothing. Everybody has control over you because you have nothing. You right. can't help yourself you don't even have you know you, you know simple things okay and then you know it's it's like you're living on this on a thread from day to day week to week month to month you know and you're just waiting and then your quality of life is just it's nothing. And then you, you know, you have hopes and dreams, your kids have hopes and dreams, and they linger on if something's gonna open up and you're just, you're just there, yeah. you know, and, and it's, it's, it's a survival until right. who cares if it's quiet or, or it's not, you know, like, oh, this and that, the, uh, that's not, it's, well, it's this. It's, horrible it's, suppression, oppression, depression of everything. And then, you know, you have this horrible state of poverty too, where you can't help yourself nor anybody else around you that actually really needs it. And you really don't have anybody there either that's really willing to help you get further. And then you do, there's things that you need to do or want to do. You can't do that because you can't even get the things that you need at that either. Right. You're just, you're just here and the time is just passing by and you're just stuck. Yeah. Like wasting but, away. I want to compliment you for several things. First of all, when you became aware of, you know, all of this stuff happening in your life and um, then your, you know, your kids were taken away. You weren't just sitting there boo-hooing on the couch. Okay. A lot of us wouldn't know what to do. You are a very strong, very smart person. 
And so you. you've done, you've, you've gathered resources. You've done the very best you can do. You have not sat around. You haven't relented. You're still out there fighting and your knowledge is going to be used for, to advocate for other people, as I've seen on your channel that have had, you know, similar circumstances. You're going to know what to do and who to talk to and how to help them better because of what you've gone through, you know? And that doesn't really make you feel much better, but I think you're, you're like the light at the end of the tunnel is starting to show through now for you. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. But you're super strong and, you know, a a person that didn't have that strength wouldn't be sitting here now. Right. And look at, they've tried to kill you a jillion times too. Yeah. Cars blowing up, cars on fire, accidents, um, you know, all this crazy stuff. The drugs, like the, the the poison, like that is not typical stuff that someone would go through and you're still here. Mm-hmm. So there's a big reason that we don't know yet. It's going to be really fun, I think, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yep. we can go two ways here. We can keep going with more Q&A or we can come back another time, however you want to do it. Oh, it's however you want. We're still live too. Yep, we're live. Oh. And um yeah. So so basically you found out MJ was your um well who he was, first of all. Yeah, who he was, Jeffrey yeah. Lee. We you hung out that. with him a little bit, blah, 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 blah. We'll go. I brought we'll go. I could tell you a fun story though. Yeah, let's hear that. I brought him into Fox Five News. When was this? Uh 2018. Okay. I brought him into Fox Five News as Jeffrey Lee. Oh, because I wanted it to end so bad, you know? So I told him, I said, let's go. You're going into Fox 5 News. He's like, I am? I was like, yeah, you're going to Fox 5 News. You're going to end this death hoax. And he's like, they're not going to listen to you. I said, I don't care. Walked him right in there. He's just standing there and he's gone. And I said, excuse me, excuse me. And they said, yes, can we help you? I said, you're going to report that he's alive. They were like, well from the looks of it he's alive i said do you know who the hell that is oh they were God. like who is it i said it's michael jack i said it's michael jackson yeah they were like what i said it is michael jackson i said take a good look at him it is michael jackson and he's standing there they're not listening to you <laughs> never once did he say She's crazy. No, I'm not. None of that. He just said, they're not listening to you. They Let's they won't listen for multiple reasons. No, they're, they're heavily programmed. They've got the story down. Oh, yeah. And then they don't want to break a story and have it be an imposter. There's a lot of lookalikes yeah. out there and people that act like, you know what I mean? Well, I, I see, he's not, he's not the one they last seen. The pale, skinny nose with the hair going, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, they were like, oh, you know, this and that, fake news. I said, you're fake news. You know, and they're like, no, that's CNN. I said, no. I said, that's you too. I said, that's you too. I said, did you report Michael Jackson dead? I said, every news station reported Michael Jackson dead. I said, yeah. that makes you fake news too. I said, because I'm telling you, the SOB is standing in front of your face. He's right here in the flesh. You should take his DNA. I'm telling you right now, that is Michael Jackson. And then I started breaking it down. I was like, guaranteed. I said, his legal name is Michael Joe Jackson. They got it on the death certificate because it's fake as Michael Joseph Jackson. That is not legal on a death certificate to have the middle name not be the legal name from the birth certificate. I said, because his legal name is not Michael Joseph Jackson I said, you're not doing your facts. Like I started breaking down facts in there about yeah. how he is not dead. I said, you know why? Because he is not dead. You people did not check your facts. I started breaking down the grave site that there was no body in the grave site. I started breaking down. <laughs> no, I did. I said, because I do my research. You people don't do your research about Michael Joe, Joe Jackson. I said, his name is not Joseph legally. It's not Joseph. I just saw a thing, like, I think it was yesterday on how the death certificate was not signed. No, it's not signed. Yeah. I told, I brought that up too. 
I said, it's not time. I said, and, and furthermore, they did not look at his, uh, the so-called body in the, in the, uh, morgue. They used yeah. the driver's license to identify that. Who does yeah. that? Like yeah. I said, you people don't even know that because he ain't dead. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, you're, so you're telling us that Michael Jackson's not dead. I said, the facts tell you that fool. And he's like, they're not going to listen. Let's just go. <laughs> and I said, shut your mouth. I said, and furthermore, my father is Manson. Oh, I, I brought that up too. Furthermore, yeah. my father is Manson. Oh my and they just look like only in New York City. I said, no, actually, it's in America. And you all report fake news. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going at it. Yeah. So for those that don't know, Lydia is a master a decoder so she pulls up everything she compares the numbers the dates the this the that she is so good at it and you'll see it all the time on her telegram channel which i'll put in the description and you know one other thing i'll say as long as i'm talking is you know if you want to support lydia she's got her cash app and paypal and all that in the description below and she'd appreciate anything you know you feel called to donate to her and um so basically summary version adopted um, raised by Charles Manson. We don't know who your adopted mother really was. No. Uh, we find out then adopted father is Charles Manson, real father is Trump, and I believe the real Trump. Um, and then uh, we find out the mother was Whitney Houston when she was super young, and then uh, Michael Jackson. So that's a pretty interesting story right there. I'm sure there's tons and tons of details we don't know yet. And that's all good um, because you'll be telling us again in more detail at some point. Let me ask a question though, Lydia. Yeah. What specifically would you like to happen at this point? So what's your um, objective at this point? Clifford is now 18. He's still living in the household he was in. I assume. What would you like to have happen? Oh, he's in LA. Oh, he's in LA now. So he signed on with a record label. Mm -hmm. And okay. So he's out there. Mm. Okay. What would you like to happen in your life? I know it's yeah. a hard question because you don't know uh, you know, how it's gonna yeah. go. I mean, I I mean I stopped asking Trump himself. Yeah to say anything. I mean, that just seems like a lost cause. I think the replacements, is is. the replacements, well, even yeah, if you got I, their DNA, it's not going to match. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is what it is with that. Um, but I still want the truth to come out Yeah, because it's the only way, you know, because my character on paper, on paper from what they've done to it is a lie and it's not right. Yeah. So it's like, it, it's just not right. Yeah. It, it's not right. And that's not justice. Um, the targeted individual program that they're running needs to end. It's not right to any person, any yeah. human being. Um, yeah. That's that's number two. Um, you know, um, CPS, that needs to be dealt with. And um, just because, you know, my kids are over 18, I mean, doesn't mean it should still run. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's wrong. Yeah. Um you know, and it, it just, this whole thing needs to, it, it just. Yeah. Well, to, we, we so know much. that CPS is a corrupt organization. I bet, right. And they're really like child procurement services, not protection. Yeah. I hate to say that, but it's true. And it they true. were caught, um, I'm going to say it was 2017, maybe a little earlier. They caught um, CPS with, it was like a ship or a barge. I forget the number of kids. Let's say 250 foster kids. What they did is they went and took them all out of their foster homes. They put them on the barge and they were down around Florida going somewhere when they caught them. Now, where were the, all those kids being taken? See, the we can't trace those kids. Like, they're the ones that have the records on those kids. We don't know how to trace them. So they are a corrupt organization and nothing happened back then. Right. So um, it's only gotten worse and worse and worse. So we know that's all coming out. You know, we, we know about the child trafficking. They're, yeah. you know, 
with pedophilia. The, it's coming out in the news. Not fast enough, but it's coming out. And that's a good thing. We need that to come out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, one thing I think you had told me, if I'm not mistaken, is that Trump did come to you in disguise, maybe when you were in your, like, say, 20s. Mm -hmm. I think you said you were in the hospital. Is that true? Mm -mm. Oh, no. Oh, but no, no. Oh, that one time when I um had the knee operation, I was older than 20. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were. And you mm -hmm. said he came to visit you. Is that yeah, that was uh yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you didn't Trump really know, you as know, Gator? What's that? As Gator? Yeah. So how'd you know it was him? Well, I didn't then. But um that was the little clues I was getting getting um lately, yeah. Yeah. So That's interesting. Well, you've had an interesting life. This is interesting. I have Clifford calling. Oh, well, I'm going to go then. You've got to talk to him. I was just going to say we're going to see this on a mini series. All right. We're going to ha you're going to go so you can talk to him, okay? Yes. Thanks but thank you time. guys. I appreciate. Thank <laughs> you. Appreciate it, Lydia. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye, Sue. Bye everyone. Okay.